Grace and peace in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of the entire St. Stephen's Church family, I welcome you to online worship at St. Stephen's United Methodist Church in Burke, Virginia. I'm Rob Robertson, one of the pastors here, along with Pastor Gian Kim and Pastor Forrest Teague. And we are honored that you would join us for the service of worship for Sunday October the 4th. If you are a guest today, we want you to get connected to the life in the ministry of St. Stephen's. We encourage you to check out our website, but also look us up on Twitter, Facebook, and also Instagram. We also have a weekly email that we encourage you to get connected with uh, as well. St. Stephen's Church continues to work towards a return to in-person worship and gatherings. Two Sundays ago, our youth gathered outdoors for a youth kickoff event. And last Sunday, uh, the youth had a confirmation service for, for 10 confirmands, out, also outdoors. And additional services are being planned. Holy Communion is returning to worship at St. Stephen's today. And we will begin the celebration of Holy Communion during this worship service, but you are encouraged and invited to come and be part of a drive-through to pick up uh, the elements, but also to receive a blessing on Sunday, October the 4th, from 12 noon to 1 p.m. That's an event, rain or shine. Now, as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship, we light our candles a symbol of the light of Christ and Christ's presence here with us and with you. Let us worship. Join me now in call to worship. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to God glorious praises. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. Our opening song today is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Church, I invite you to pray with me now. Loving Lord, how grateful we are for the many joys in life that you and your grace have bestowed on us in such abundance. 
Thank you for the simple things in life and those that we so often take for granted. Thank you for the joy of friends and family, for the sun and the rain, the seasons and the many phases of weather that bring such variety, refreshment, warmth, and healing. Thank you for the joy of singing praises to you and rejoicing in your presence and goodness. Thank you, God, for Jesus in whom, through the Holy Spirit, is the fullness of joy. Amen. Hello everyone, I'm so excited to share the wonderful story from the Bible, which is the book of God's love stories for everyone in the world, right? And also the book has lots of great stories about the people who loved God so much. And I want to tell you about David. Mm, maybe mo many of you know the story David defeated the shepherd boy, the little one, defeated the giant Goliath, and later on, that little boy became the king of the country. So he has lots of people under his power, and he is an awesome king. And you know what? He still loved God so much. So King David worshipped God in a so many great ways. And one of the ways, he danced. Can you believe that? In front of the people, all the servants, he danced to worship God. How did he dance? I don't know. Maybe he moved his body a little bit. Maybe he raised his hands to worship God. I don't know. How do I look now? Mm, maybe do I look silly now? I don't know. But to the eyes of God, every time King David danced, God loved him so much because God knew that David danced to worship God. But one of the people Actually, the daughter of King Saul thought, what a shame the king of the country danced in front of the, all the servants. No way, he should not. But David always has the heart of great thankfulness, so he danced to worship God. So if you have a full of joy, full of thankfulness, please move your body and dance to worship God. Maybe you feel like you're not a good dancer. Maybe some people make fun of you. That's fine. In the eyes of God, you look beautiful because you have a full of joy and full of thankfulness in your heart. So today, what about we are having some dance time with our family members and that will bring you more joy and thankfulness into your life of family. Okay, let us put our hands together. This is echo prayer, so please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for filling our hearts with full of joy and full of thankfulness. We love you. And we want to worship you with our songs, with our praises, with our dance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, as we enter into this series on thankfulness, we are very thankful for our 10 confirmands who joined us last Sunday and joined this church body. We had 10 confirmands one getting baptized, and I want you to celebrate with me as we read off their names and you will see a video of them shown during our time. So at home, behind your own screen, please rejoice with me and lift up to God these wonderful new members of the church. Charge Jeffrey Stockwell, Dallin Frenchney, Drew French, Tucker Batten, Abby Sizowitz, Amanda Armstrong, Aspen Caldwell, Olivia St. Victor, Aaron Gardner, and Lauren Allen. We rejoice in these people and in this church. So now, having received much and received the blessing of rejoicing in the new beginning of their life, let us go before the Lord to offer back to him. Almighty God, 
We have seen just over this past week how you take, you take lives and you transform them by your grace. So God, in this time where we offer up our gifts out of a thankful heart, we pray over them that they would go into this world being used by the power of your Holy Spirit to transform lives. So lead this, lead this church to a place of transformation, that the gifts that we have, both monetary and the gifts that you have given to each one of us through the power of the Spirit, be taken out into this world. Amen. Today, our reading covers one of the pivotal events in ancient Israel's religious and political history. As King David consolidates his power and his authority, both as a political and religious leader in Jerusalem. The events lay the foundation of a golden age of Israelites' history. While all of this is most important, our focus in today's reading will be somewhat different. Our focus will be on the themes of remembrance and thankfulness and joy. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidon to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of trumpet. 
as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Bichal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the well-being and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. David returned to bless his household. But Michal, daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants' maidens, as any vulgar fellow might shamelessly uncover himself. David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me in place of your father and all his household to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, that I have danced before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in my own eyes. But by the maids of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in honor. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, it's been about 15 months since Carolyn and I moved to Northern Virginia to serve with you at St. Stephen's. Many of the memories of our move are still fresh. We thought we would be moving in early, maybe about the 20th uh, of June, but it turned out that we didn't move in to the townhome that we had rented until July the 12th. The delay was caused by a, a military mover who was greatly delayed in picking up our landlord's furniture to ship it to Japan. Then when moving day did finally come, the van, the moving van, couldn't negotiate the streets of our neighborhood and our furniture sat suspended in the moving van for more than six hours, only 150 feet from our steps. But it wasn't all difficulty. We also experienced some amazing hospitality from our new St. Stephen's family, especially from our shepherds. All these memories seem to be periodically refreshed as we have been organizing tax documents and, and moving expenses. But even more recently, with the writing of my pastor's report for Charge Conference, that will be held on October the 13th at 7 o'clock via Zoom. Now, if you think this is a shameless plug to encourage you to attend Charge Conference, well, uh, you just may be right. But the biggest thing that continues to remind us that we haven't quite moved in is there's still lots of unpacked boxes in much of our garage and even in some of the corners of our home. It just seems as... If we're still moving in, even after 15 months, our reading today is also about moving problems. King David is having moving problems. He too hasn't quite moved in. Yes, David and his family uh, have taken up a home in Jerusalem and their palace, but something is missing. There is something, something really holy still to move and unpack. He still has to move the ark from the control of the Philistines to the new capital in Jerusalem. The ark or the ark of the covenant, which properly belonged to Israel, 
was with the Philistines. And it wasn't right for the ark to be with an enemy of Israel. Even after the ark's return to Israel, it had resided for a number of years in the town of uh, Baal, Judah, about only eight miles from Jerusalem. David and his people had one job to do, move the ark to Jerusalem. But the first attempt didn't go very well. The, bar, the ark was basically home to the presence in the glory of God. It contained two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, the rod of Aaron, as well as the golden pot of manna. The ark was about the size of a large trunk, maybe four feet by three feet by two feet. It was carried by means of two poles threaded through brass rings on each side. But this ark, it had history. It was linked to a number of miracles. When the Israelites crossed the Jordan, entering the promised land for the very first time, the waters of the Jordan parted as the Red Sea parted decades earlier during the seminal event that we know as the Exodus. As the Israelites moved into the promised land, they, they encountered formidable, formidable of resistance in Jericho. But when the priests carried the ark around the city for a week, on the seventh day, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Even after gaining the ark from the Philistines, because of a mishap during the move, the move of the ark to Jerusalem had stopped. The ark was left in the home of Obedidim. And the family of Obedidim was blessed while the ark was in their home for three months. But when David realized that the blessings had fallen upon Obedidim's house, David decided that it was finally, finally time. He was finally ready to bring the ark to Jerusalem. Seeing how God had blessed Obedidim, David decided to move God again. And this time, he did it right. David spares no expense. He sacrifices an ox and a fatted calf every six paces that the ark advanced. And wearing a linen ephod, David danced and leaped and shouted before the Lord with all his might, certainly with far more enthusiasm than anyone on Dancing with the Stars. The ark was brought into the tent that David had prepared for it. This was, you see, before the construction of the temple in Jerusalem. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. And he blessed the people and he distributed food among all the people. It was an incredibly joyful worship experience, full of music and shouting and enthusiastic mu uh, movement, all made possible because by the grace of God, David remembers. You see, David remembers the Lord's faithfulness. And this brings thankfulness and joy. Theologian and author Frederick Buchner writes this, how they cut loose whirling around before the ark in such a passion that they caught fire from each other and blazed up in a single flame. David's enthusiasm, his enthusiastic dance before the Lord was not so much before the Lord, but it was with God and that magnificence of the Lord's presence. Enthusiastic is a word that originally meant in God, in theos, in God. And even the scolding that David got from his wife about his enthusiasm afterwards 
could not dim the glory of it or David's thanksgiving and joy. Now, what do we learn in these, voice, in these verses? Most of us know that cultivating thankfulness, including the practice of counting our blessings, is good for us. But we may not know just how good thankfulness is. There are six reasons for the importance of thankfulness in our lives that, that I want to briefly talk with you about today. And I encourage you to write these down. They'll be on the screen. First, thankfulness glorifies God. This alone is a good reason to give thanks to God. Our thankfulness glorifies God as we exalt not the gifts, but the giver. Thankfulness and gratitude helps us to realize all we have comes not from us, but comes as a gift from God. Now second, thankfulness helps us to see God. To see God. It opens our spiritual eyes. There's a, a beautiful cycle in giving God thanks. The more we thank God, the more we see God's working in and around us. And of course, then, the more we want to thank God. Thankfulness helps us to sense God's presence, God's personal care, and even God's perfect timing. Third, Thankfulness draws us to God. Thankfulness has the, the magnitude, thankfulness for the magnitude of God's love and grace, undeserved kindness for us, draws us closer to the heart of God where we are called to live and move and have our being. Thankfulness draws us to God. Fourth, thankfulness puts us in God's will. We often make the mistake of considering God's will to be some big, mysterious plan. When sometimes it's really something quite simple about obedience. And part of God's will for us is that we would be thankful. Not just on easy days, but on the hard days as well. Reason five for practicing thankfulness is thankfulness brings faith and peace. When we remember God's faithfulness, or better yet, we keep a record of God's past faithfulness our faith is boosted, especially when times of difficulty arise. When we count our blessings and not sheep, we melt the worry that keeps us up at night. Thankfulness helps us to see that in God's hands, that all of our being and all of our lives are, are truly in God's hands. Every, each and every circumstance. And God tells us when we give God our thanks, God gives us supernatural peace, a peace that passes all understanding. Six, thankfulness begets joy. Finally, the overflowing of thankfulness is joy. Realizing God's abundant goodness, even in difficult times, brings joy. Joy is God-centered, and it's cultivated in thankfulness. Joy comes from being in God's presence. 
God is the living and active source of God's people's joy as they worship him. Joy is fostered in us as we, we come together as God's people with God at the center. And this is possible even if we're not gathered in one place as we are now, dispersed across multiple screens. Because, you see, our coming together is more, much more than about meeting in a place, but rather meeting through a person. Meeting together through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Because thankfulness helps us to remember God's faithfulness, joy comes in remembering God's faithfulness and in giving thankfulness. Indeed, the joy of God's people comes through thankfulness. All six of these reasons are evident in our lesson today about David and his bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. Thanks, thankfulness glorifies God. Thankfulness helps us see God. Thankfulness draws us to God. Thankfulness puts us in God's will. Thankfulness brings faith and peace. And faithfulness, and thankfulness begets joy. This week, I am praying that you will do two things. In the week ahead, I hope that you will go back and reread today's lesson to see how each of these six reasons of, for thankfulness impact David's life and why your practice of thankfulness is so important in your walk with Jesus and reaching out to the world with his love and his grace. Because we are too apt to forget the blessings of life when we are in the midst of life. The second thing I want you to, to do, I encourage you to do, is to create a thankfulness journal. Begin today. Begin today and, and add to it for the next 30 days. Regardless if your journal is in a fancy folio or on a simple spiral notebook, write down all the blessings that you have that you're thankful for. And keep adding to the list as you remember more and more of the blessings that God has given you and is giving you. And remember to add those new blessings that you experience over these next 30 days as well. As I close my message today, I invite you to hear the words from Psalm 105. We're going to read just verses 1 through 5. These words were sung by David. They were sung as he brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he uttered. Sisters and brothers, like David, may the joy of thankfulness be yours. Amen. Church.
I invite you now to join me as we go before the Lord in a time of prayer. Almighty God, we come to you out of a thankful heart for all of the blessings that you have given to us. You have bestowed upon us, each one, giftings of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, let us not be a church that just holds on to these gifts, but let us be a church empowered by your Holy Spirit to go out and to use these gifts that you have given us, to use them in our community, at home, at work, and wherever we go. And let us approach you today and all days going forward out of a humble heart. And Lord, out of this humbleness, let it shine through us, knowing that you are the creator of all and control of all, that we would take that into every conversation so that the gifts that we are sharing with the world are not just our own, but for your glory. And God, there is so much going on in this world right now. We lift up to you the healing of this planet that has been ravaged by a pandemic, that is fighting climate changes and family dynamics all over the world. God, there is hurt. But we know, as your children being called into your family, that you are the ultimate source of joy and of thankfulness that comes from healing and that comes from unity. So Lord, we offer ourselves to you to be outside of our comfort zone and to be an instrument of your gospel throughout this world. And we pray, we pray because it's powerful and your son Jesus taught us to pray and now we join in that prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What a joy it is to be able to celebrate Holy Communion again at St. Stephen's Church. We are going to be celebrating Holy Communion in two parts. We will start the Communion Liturgy, including an invitation and confession during this service. But then we invite you to come and be part of a drive-through portion of the service from 12 to 1, 12 noon to 1 p.m. today, October the 4th, to receive a blessing and also to receive the elements of bread and juice. Hear this invitation to the table of the Lord. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. God of mercy, we confess that we have not loved you with all our being. We have done things which we ought not to have done, and we have left undone things which we ought to have done. We have built law, walls between neighbors and between countries, and we have ignored the cries of those in need. Forgive us and free us for joyful obedience that we may live into the hope of your calling, that your reign may come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. 
Glory to God. Amen. Let us pray together. Loving God, holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Amen. Again, I encourage you to be part of our drive-through portion of our communion service this afternoon, Sunday October the 4th, from 12 noon to 1 p.m. We will have that rain or shine. We will be using these small cups and not uh, the large cups in the, in the loaf as we often do in our time of Holy Communion, but these prepackaged cups. So I invite you to come and to receive the elements. Now receive this benediction. We leave this time of worship to go and serve our Lord in praise, in thankfulness, and in joy. We go to share the love and the grace of God with the world. Amen.